Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with the Actually Tiny House Project where we are exploring smart, simple, sustainable tiny house design and giving you some building tips along the way. Now, the topic of today's video is flexible corners for tiny house sheetrock because as you can see here, we decided to use sheetrock for the inside of our tiny house, which is a decision that comes with upsides and downsides, but the general consensus among experienced tiny house builders is that if you build your building right and you put up your sheetrock in a certain way, it is going to be strong enough to survive the flexing of when you move your tiny house. And that's a topic that is bigger than this video, so you'll have to watch for a separate tiny house sheetrock video where we talk about how we installed this. This video is really specifically just to talk about the product that we used for the corners of the building here because it's always the corners of a building where the sheetrock is going to crack. So what we did to guard against this is use a product called Magic Corners from a company called TrimTech. And what this is is a little plastic corner like this that has a flexible gasket in the corner and you install it by spray gluing it into the corner here and then mudding up to it and then if there's any flex while you're moving your tiny house this gasket is going to absorb that and you're not going to have the cracking that you would normally see now this stuff isn't actually that much more expensive than a normal corner and we found that it was awesome and easy to install but there are some things that you need to know about if you want to be successful and that's what i'm going to talk about here all right, so let's start off here by talking about what comes in the box here and what other tools and materials you're going to need to gather to put this stuff up. So first up here, I've got this 100-foot roll of Magic Corner. This isn't something you're going to find in stores. You're going to have to order this off the internet, but it only costs about 35 bucks for a 100-foot roll, so it's really not that expensive. This roll is just enough to do the inside of our 20-foot long tiny house, but we have a fairly low ceiling, so you want to make sure you measure your corners so you order the right amount. Now this stuff comes with its own spray adhesive here and this stuff is specific for this product. So you wanna make sure you use the spray adhesive that comes with it to put it on the walls. It also has a little installation tool here which is pretty handy. And you're gonna need a tape measure to measure it out, a pencil to mark it, and a scissors to cut it. You're also gonna need a stapler with some half inch staples and you're going to need respiratory protection to protect your lungs, plastic gloves to protect your hand, and safety glasses to make sure you don't get any spray glue in your eyes. So another thing I like to do here is make myself a wooden batten that is as wide as this corner measurement here, which is approximately one and three eighths of an inch. And what this lets me do is hold the batten up to the wall, and then I can just mark along the outside of it on my corners here, and that's gonna give me a perfect alignment mark to be able to stick this up onto the wall. Now, the instructions recommend that you do this by snapping a chalk line, but I know from personal experience that chalk lines are usually not very accurate when you're doing it that way, so I think the batten is a much better alignment solution. All right, so last thing I've got here is a nice long work table at waist level right in the middle of my workspace. And the reason this is important is because speed is everything when you're working with this product. This spray glue here is meant to go wet on wet, which means that you wanna spray one surface, you wanna spray the other, and you immediately wanna put this into the corner because there's only about a 15 second window there where this stuff is still wet enough that you can slide the corner perfectly onto its alignment marks. So by being really well organized with a really good work table, you're going to save yourself time, which gives you more time to line it up on its marks. Now, something that's helpful here is to actually have a couple spring clamps handy so you can clamp down one end of this. Otherwise, it's gonna to wanna to roll up on you and make a sticky mess. So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the length of the corner here. And then I'm gonna come over to my work table here. I'm gonna line my magic corner up with the end of the work table and clamp it. And then I'm gonna take my tape measure, hook it on the end, and measure all the way out to my measurement. Now, I like to mark and also cut this about a quarter inch shy of my actual measurement because it is way better to be a little bit short than it is to be a little bit long with this stuff. Now, at the top of a corner where you're gonna have multiple corners coming together, you also need to cut this at 45 degrees. And you just take your scissors. You can either do this by eye or you can do it with some type of a square. Cut that at 45 degrees. And that way, when this goes into the corner, the corners that are coming up to it won't overlap. All right, so I'm just gonna talk you through the process of sticking this stuff to the corner here, and then I'm gonna use video clips to fill in and show you what I'm doing, because I can't talk when I have my respirator on. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your spray glue and take one smooth, deliberate stroke all the way down your corner, 
and then you're going to want to step directly over to the magic corner. You want to make sure you spray the correct side of the magic corner and do one long deliberate stroke all the way down the magic corner. Set your spray glue aside, pick up the magic corner and fold it, making sure that you're folding it the correct way. And you're just going to start at the top of your corner and press that into the corner. And if you do all this quickly enough, it's going to be liquid enough that you can actually push it onto your alignment marks, which is going to work much better for you than waiting for it to get tacky and then having to stick that up perfectly. So don't be frantic because being frantic is going to cost you just as much time as dilly dallying but you do want to be deliberate so you can get this onto the wall as quickly as possible. So I just want you to notice here that this corner ended up just a little bit shy of my alignment mark right here, and that was actually deliberate. I made that one and three eighths batten just a little bit wider than the actual corner because it's always easier to follow an alignment mark that you can see rather than one you've just covered up. All right, so once I've got this stuck into the corner here and it's parallel with its alignment marks, next thing I'm gonna do is come in with this tool that comes in the kit and I'm just going to press this down nice and hard to really firmly stick this to the wall. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of the corner. And then I'm gonna wait for four minutes, I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna do it one more time. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in with my stapler, and I'm gonna staple this stuff to the wall about every six inches. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of the corner. All right, so that's it for putting up the magic corners here. A couple more things I wanna mention before I go. You wanna make sure you're using all-purpose joint compound, not the lightweight stuff to mud this in place. And you can also get a special additive from TrimTech that makes that mud even stronger for these corners, which I think is pretty important for a tiny house. You do want to follow all the instructions for this product because it's not like a normal corner. You're actually gonna go back with this tool and clean all of the mud out of that corner. And the only thing that ends up on top of that corner is just one light coat of paint. So if it flexes a little bit, you're not gonna see any visible cracking. Okay, that's it for now. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also think about heading over to actuallytiny.com where we've got a bunch more free tiny house resources. You can also follow us on Instagram at actuallytiny where we upload a daily build blog of everything that we're doing here on the tiny house, including time-lapse videos. All right, thanks for watching. Have fun building your tiny house.